Welcome back to a DIY episode of The Simple Farmhouse. I'm Laura and I'm so glad you're here because today I'm going to try my hand at my very first time ever of refacing a cabinet. This I'm going to do for under $100. Today's DIY is sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. We actually received our package and made our meal before the coronavirus hit. And now that we are looking at these new circumstances, this has become a great option for older family members who shouldn't be leaving the house. Even in times when life is normal, it's still hard to get to the store. As a homeschooling mom of five and a pastor's wife, HelloFresh makes it easy to prepare meals with less wasted food and also a smaller carbon footprint 25% lower than a meal made from store-bought groceries. So I have to tell you, my kids can't even agree on pizza. I have some picky eaters and after making this dish, all five of the kids loved it. You can use my code, the Simple Farmhouse 10, for 10 free meals off your first month. You can follow the link in the description below. So, after the kids were fed, it was time to tackle this job. Instead of repainting our bathroom cabinet, I planned on removing the drawer fronts as well as the cabinet doors. The drawers just unscrew and then that center section, it just pops off. On the back, there's pieces that look like this. I'm going to unscrew those and reuse them on my new facing. My goal with this is to make it look more streamlined and more like custom cabinetry than builder grade. My plan is to use this select pine board for all of my drawer fronts. I measured the cabinet and from these measurements I drew a sketch and came up with my cut list. So now that I've done this, I would actually recommend not starting in the center with putting on the drawer faces. It was actually easier to start on the end and then work my way across. I had some readjusting to do because I started in the center. But with the cuts that I made, I left just enough space for paint between the drawers, making sure that they could slide easily open and closed and looking for that clean, modern looking front. Once they were installed, I sanded across the face to give it that smooth finish. Then it was on to the cabinet doors. I made a simple frame using a Craig jig. So as you can see, I am not a professional. I am a learning DIYer, and this is one of the ways I feel comfortable building. I'm going to run pocket screws into the two side pieces by drilling into the top and bottom pieces with this special drill bit. It makes a pocket hole just like this. And then I will find center on my centerpiece and the top and bottom pieces so that I know where to drive those pocket screws into. I did a little dry fit just to see how it was going to work and I liked the outcome. So I went ahead and started applying that inset area. You could certainly use a piece of plywood. I chose to use cane webbing just for a little modern touch and a little textural interest. I'll include a link in the description for you. Now obviously I can't install this the way cane webbing is installed on a seat. So first I will measure and cut and my plan is to attach this using glue. And at first I was planning on just using some staples, but I found some leftover scraps of plywood and I decided to use those. I soaked each piece for about five minutes just to relax it before attaching it with glue and clamps and some finishing nails. The reason I soaked it is that it helps to allow the piece to not have wrinkles as it dries. It tightens up a little bit. Then it was time to reattach the old hardware from the other cabinet doors. 
I actually purchased a new Craig jig specifically designed for installing this type of hardware and this is how it worked. It was pretty straightforward, just attach it to your drill. I did a little practice run on the old cabinet to make sure it looked the way I wanted it to. And then this is the part where I made my work a little bit extra hard. Um, if this is your first time doing it and you're not comfortable taking this approach, then just make the cabinet doors the same size as the original cabinet doors. I was trying to minimize that extra space around the drawers and cabinets, as you can see. And so I made them bigger, knowing that I would need to find out what this measurement is right here where the overlap is and to take that off the edges. And the only way I could figure that out was by hanging them. So I took that measurement and divided it by two, then added a millimeter in order to allow space for paint in between the cabinet doors. So I removed the doors and then I notched out that measurement just where the hardware was. And then I re-hung the cabinet doors. So the insides of the doors aren't that pretty, but you know what? It's my first time and I really just wanted something pretty on the outside and I was happy with that. I first thought I was going to stain them to look like this beautiful inspiration and that did not work out. So then I tried some white paint. Both of those options actually made my floor, my 90s beige floor, stand out all the more and so I knew I was going to have to come up with a different color and I went out on a limb and tried this deep dark color from Sherwin-Williams called pewter green and it's kind of a chameleon color which you'll see at the end when I show the finished product. What I learned is that you don't need an enamel paint. A sample from Sherwin-Williams is about six dollars and it's a quart and it was more than enough to cover all that I needed to cover. To get that smooth look, just use a velvet roller cover on a four inch cabinet roller. For the insets, I did have to brush very carefully and go over it in a dabbing motion like this two or three times. By the end of day one, this is what I was working with. I did come back that evening and decided to add some feet I just took a leftover piece of that pine and measured out and made a mirror image. I thought I was going to do a foot in the middle, but I ended up only doing a foot for each side of the cabinet. In order to attach it, I just needed a style of cleat to attach it to. I took a small piece of leftover wood, measured it in order to fit the piece snugly into place. So when I attach this to the wall, that foot will slip right in there and not move. I'll attach another one to the underside of the cabinet. If you know me, you know my projects tend to turn into something a little bit extra. That medicine cabinet was bothering me after creating a new cabinet. And so I pulled it out and I had some leftover pieces of plywood that I turned into shiplap boards. This is a very budget friendly way to accomplish a look in your space. Just make sure that you paint in between those boards so that you don't have the wall showing through. I also added a peg rack with these very simple screw in pegs. If you are interested in seeing a DIY for this, leave a comment in the comment section below. then it was time to install the hardware. I'll link these bar handles below. They were from Amazon. They have similar looking round knobs. I chose to use some old ones that I had on hand that I found on clearance at Anthropology. I did have to come back and use some old spray paint to paint that knob because it was silver and it just clashed with the new gold pieces that I brought into the room. So one side of the bathroom is finished now. I still need to come back and finish the other side, but this cabinet was completed for under $100. The faucets I did find for about $30 each from Amazon, and I'll link the rest below in the description.
So stay tuned for the other side of the bathroom, but for now, I'm enjoying having this new view of a pretty new cabinet. If you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell to receive notifications of my next video.